We are still quite a ways away from the start of the NFL season, but I figured why not try and predict every team's starting quarterback week one. We all know they're going to probably churn through on average about two and a half quarterbacks each team per year. I mean, we saw Cleveland roll out four different starters, I believe, this past year. So, you know, even though some teams, you know, they might ride with one guy the entire year, I think many teams will have to, you know, whether it be injuries or bad performance, have to switch it up. But we're just going to focus on week one here. Even if they never start another game again, week one starting QBs. I love that. Very excited for it. And I like your two and a half average line. That's like a sharp little See, Vegas odds maker. Now I want to like calculate last year. Like what Dude. was the number for like the average number of quarterbacks, mm-hmm. starting quarterbacks for each team last year? Like if you just told that them that probably like is four, you know, yeah. Seattle had two with Geno Smith and Drew Locke. You know, the Giants had three. The Bears had two, I believe. Kirk Cousins went down. So they had like three or four guys rolled out there. I mean, it's probably even higher than two. I feel like, didn't the Giants have maybe even four? I know it was Tommy DeVito, Daniel Jones, and uh, they also had like Tyrod Taylor. Taylor. I thought they had a fourth one sneak in there because when um, DeVito got hurt, or is that when Taylor came in? I'm pretty sure it was just those three. Okay. But I would not be surprised if there was some rando jake from type of guy in yeah. there as well you know i got you dude two and a half is honestly probably a really good number yeah because then you had josh allen patrick mahomes those right, guys who just wrote game. it out the entire yeah yeah so yeah guys we're going to just jump right in after you give a little nba playoff update oh actually NFL, NFL news, news. We got oh my quite a goodness few signings gracious. here We've got Chase Claypool signed to a one-year contract with Buffalo. Ugh. So now, great, Josh Allen has another guy who will not add much no, talent yeah. to that team. I mean, don't love this, bro. I think it just pollutes the locker room. Yeah, Chase has just been getting you know tossed from team to team here from yeah, the Steelers to the the Dolphins within like four years. Wait, so. What was his other team? Steelers, Dolphins, Bills. Bears. Oh, the Bears. The yeah. Bears. How could I forget the Bears? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't like this. I'm a little bit worried now about my team in the Buffalo Bills because he seems to be a little bit toxic. Yeah, but, I would agree. Oh, well, we've got DJ Chark signed to a one-year contract with the Chargers. Now, I mean, he, DJ Chark's not really a star receiver or anything. A couple of years ago, he, he had like a, a top 15 yeah. performance, I believe. Uh, in in Jacksonville. Yeah. He was really good with... Gardner Minshew down Jacksonville. So mm-hmm. I like this signing actually quite a bit. He's do still you? a young guy. Yeah. He's bounced around quite a few teams, but I th- really do like him. I think this is an underrated <clears throat> signing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that he is uh, going to be the star wide receiver. No. But, like, I mean, the Chargers are kind of going from quite the downgrade, yeah. in my opinion, from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to DJ Chark. But, I mean, Chark is still solid. I feel like he's probably, you know – their top option at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I think he's better than like Quinn Johnson. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Yeah, Jalen Guyton. Yeah, no. So this would definitely be a good signing for them mm-hmm. because Herbert needs some people to throw the ball to, but not star caliber. No, definitely not. Definitely not. They still need to work on that. I know they got someone in the draft, but. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Their receiving core is going to be interesting. Yeah. Then we've got Odell Beckham signed to a one-year contract with Miami. Another one who's just been floating around. He went to the Giants, yeah. and he was on the Ravens, and now he's on Miami. I'm sure there were another. He was on the Browns, yep. I think, as well. Yes. Anyone else that I missed there? No, I think that was everyone. Okay, yeah, just another guy floating around, but he's yeah. been in the league for much longer than uh, you know Chase Claypool and has. Shark, yeah. I just think he's washed at this point. He barely yeah. contributes anything whatsoever to the team. Mm-hmm. I'd be shocked if he incurred over more like 600 yards. I mean, that's even right. a ceiling for him. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, he hardly even got a lot of action in Baltimore. You know, it yeah, was just no. like he was due for like two catches a game maybe. Yeah, I had him draft it. on my team. And it's like, yeah, I'm just going to drop this guy. Right. Exactly. He literally is just the name, OBJ. Mm-hmm. Like that's all he's got. He's got the catch. Yeah. And that's it. Yep, and the name. Exactly. <laughs> Then we've got Michael Gallup signed to a one-year contract with Las Vegas. I like this. I think that Michael Gallup was always like a solid option on Dallas. I mean, yeah. I think that he was a little bit underrated. I'm not sure why exactly Dallas let him go, but Vegas needed some receivers, and he will be a nice compliment here to Brock Bowers. Yeah, I like this one too. They're really supporting Gardner Minshew. A lot mm-hmm. of good weapons in Vegas. Yeah, for sure. And then... This is a little bit old. I guess this happened last week, but Ezekiel Elliott signed a one-year contract with Dallas. He's back in his hometown. 
I know. I feel like they only brought him back because of all the hype that generates that Zeke mm-hmm. is back. Yeah. He's obviously beloved by the fans there. And while he was super productive for much of his time there, he has definitely slowed down. And for sure. I guess he was decent in New England. It really is just because Ramondre went down. And right. He was getting a lot of opportunities. Yeah, but Zeke doesn't have a whole lot of gas left in the tank. And no. Yeah, so I don't expect him to do much in Dallas, but other than being just a sort of galvanizing factor for exactly. the fans, like you said. Right. But yeah, let me go rip onto some basketball playoff updates here. So round one went almost exactly according to my predictions. I was seven for eight on picking the teams here. That's insane. Yeah, thank you. I'm a little bit upset because, you know, the 76ers did not come through and beat the Knicks, and I really thought that they had it in them. But, uh,. Let me just give a quick recap here. So the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat, Boston won this series. I think it was uh, four games to two, or actually it was four games to one. Um, I thought that Miami was going to win a second game, keep it a little bit closer, but Boston just took control and they won that series. Cleveland Cavaliers at Orlando Magic. This game went into game seven and was pretty close. Orlando was up 10 points at halftime, but Cleveland ended up coming back and getting the win, um, which is good. I liked Cleveland. I thought they were the better team than the Magic. Paolo Bancaro went nuts in this series, though. He was putting up so many points. It was literally just the Paolo Bancaro show, but Fortunately, Cleveland still came through and got the win for us. Milwaukee Bucks at Indiana Pacers. This was the sixth seed, upsetting the three seed. I predicted this that the Pacers would beat the Bucks here. This was honestly Great a pretty call. yeah. Thank you. This was a pretty shocking upset. I think um, maybe less so after Giannis got hurt, but even still, good win for the Pacers. They didn't even need to take this into like game six or seven. I think. Or maybe it was game six, but they didn't have to go to game seven. They either won the series four to two or four to one. And then I kind of already touched on the Knicks and the 76ers. 76ers lost. Not even much else to say about that. They I think they lost four games to two. OKC and New Orleans Pelicans. OKC pounded the Pelicans four to zero. The Clippers and the Mavs. I predicted Dallas would win this series, and they did. It was pretty close, though. I think it was either. Four to three or four to two. I think four to two there. Uh, we kind of already touched on this last week, but the Timberwolves and the Suns, Minnesota pounded the Suns, and then Denver Nuggets and the Lakers. Denver won there. But I am going to toss a couple round two predictions in here, and I'm also going to offer the game, not game spread. I don't know what you want to call it, like the the game prediction, like four to two, four to three. Like what oh, would you the call series? it? Yes, the series record, I guess. Yeah. All right, so first up, we've got OKC against Dallas Mavericks. I think OKC will win this series, one seed against the five seed here. I'm going to take OKC in game six. We've got four to two here. Dallas is a really good team. They've got a lot of good things going for them, but I just think that OKC has got a little bit more of an edge in these in these games here. Um, so I'm going to take them to win the series by two. Then we've got... The Timberwolves and the Nuggets, I'm really excited for this series. This should be one of the best ones in the playoffs. I'm going to take Denver to win it in Game 7. Denver is actually, they lost the first game to the Timberwolves here, so they're already down 1-0, but I think they're going to come back and win in Game 7. Then we've got the Boston Celtics against the Cleveland Cavaliers. This feels like a really obvious Boston win to me. I don't see... Cavaliers even coming close. I think Boston takes this one four to one. And then lastly, I've got the Pacers against the Knicks. Now I did still say back before the playoffs started, I wanted the Pacers to go to the finals, see if that could happen. So I'm going to take the Pacers to upset the Knicks here in seven games. Now this is a little bit of a risky one. You kind of would need to bet on some injuries to the Knicks in order for this to come through. Mm -hmm. I don't feel too confident that the Pacers would be able to pull this off, but I mean, it is certainly possible that, you know, Jalen Brunson could go out in the same way that Giannis went out and the Pacers could come through and sneak up on them a little bit. Yeah, exactly. A little Sly Fox action. Oh, we love that. Yeah, but I think we got a nice set of final eight teams here in the playoffs and. We're in for some good games. 
Awesome. I love those picks. I wish I could say I was following them more closely. I've been paying a little bit more attention to the NHL playoffs. It was really cool to see mm-hmm. the Maple Leafs and the Bruins go seven games. And then overtime, Ooh. Bruins ultimately taking that one. But mm-hmm. now it's time. Starting QB predictions. Let's roll. AFC East. Your favorite team here, Buffalo. I wonder who the QB is going to be. Kyle Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's obviously Josh Allen. For obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, nothing else to say, bro. Exactly. Nothing else to say about this one, even though if Tua doesn't play great this year, I feel like there could be replacement options on the table for the future. I mean, Tua's always just been pretty mid, has not been able to get done the postseason. Mm -hmm. Even though he's only made one postseason start, it was pretty poor. And if they're not playing in Miami, he is a below-average QB. Yeah, and I was just about to say, I mean, if they are going traveling anywhere cold for their playoff yeah. games, I mean, he doesn't seem like he can do anything. I remember exactly where I was where they played this game, and that's exactly where I we just had dinner at. I was really at the place that we had dinner at tonight when they had that frigid, cold, peacock-exclusive game. <laughs> that's right. That they televised the first 30 minutes of. Yeah. And then they were like, now you got to go to peacock. <laughs> I hate that. But I don't know why they do that, but yeah. The Jets obviously starring Aaron Rodgers. You guys see, the Jets got a new logo. It's oh, like they? all spelled out now. It's not the football anymore. Like Ooh. it's just like the Jets, and then like the L kind of makes an airplane, or like the J kind of makes a plain wing look. I think, but yeah, it is technically a new logo. I think it looks all right. Is it uh, this right here? Is that the new logo? Mm-hmm. That one. It's the one. Is it above? It's oh, that. man. Okay, I see now. Yeah. Interesting. Well, there's so many logos on Google. It's a little difficult I to know. find here. But, yeah, it reminds me of just like a little like paper airplane kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it, like. though. So this is going to be on the side of their helmet. I believe you know? so, yeah. It's the helmet logo, primary okay. logo. Very exciting stuff for the Jets. I kind of yeah. needed a rebrand since they, they do. sucked it up this past year. I might as well do it now. Aaron Rodgers basically is not joining the team until this year. Yeah, exactly. Effectively. Yeah. I'm going to go with Drake May for the Patriots. Not sure how you feel on this one, but yeah, I just I mean, think I that agree, you know yeah. Joe Milton. I think it's Jacoby. No, it's not Jacoby Brissett. He's on the Commanders. Wait, no, is he? he no, Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett is. Yeah. Okay, he's on that's the- his second stint in New England. He used to be on the Patriots long, long ago, along with Jimmy Garoppolo back in the day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't think he'll be able to beat out Drake May. We all know what Jacoby is. I think it yeah. probably is best to just throw Drake May into the fire. So he has the full season to get under his belt because it's going to be ugly whether you put him in game one Mm -hmm. or game seven. Yeah, I agree. I do think Drake will be the starting QB for New England. I know we're not doing rankings here, but I do think that he will have like one of the worst seasons in terms of like if we were to rank. I think he'll be one of the worst QBs in the league. I would put him down at like 30. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like, oh man, it's 30. hard not to even put him 32. I'm trying to think who Just, I would even place lower. Yeah, well, I mean, in the 30s then. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. All right, moving on to the AFC West. This one I think might be one of the easier ones. You obviously have Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert starring at their respective teams. Mm-hmm. And then you have the new QBs, Aiden O'Connell versus Gardner Minshew is maybe one of the more enticing, interesting QB battles going into the preseason here in training camps. But I do think Gardner comes out on top. That's what the fans want. They have not seen Gardner, who's the gunslinger, who has been to multiple teams and has had success pretty much everywhere he's gone. Mm -hmm. They want to see him. They know what Aiden is, even though he may have improved a little bit. I don't think Aiden's the answer. I mean, I don't think Gardner is long-term either, but I think Gardner is going to be a little bit more exciting and will kind of have some cool, fun plays, and Aiden is just more vanilla yeah no i mean raiders saw what aiden could do last yeah. year and it really wasn't a whole lot he just doesn't bring any wow factors or no. any excitement into the games and yeah the the raiders i think will choose gardner as their starter it right. seems it just seems like the right pick the weird thing about them is like i think they'll win like just enough games so they don't have a good pick in the draft next year right so then they'll just be in forever purgatory like yeah. same thing this past year they won like six seven games mm-hmm. couldn't really draft a qb because Atlanta took Michael Penix. Right. Otherwise, I really think they probably would have taken Michael Penix. Yeah, that would have been a nice move for them. Atlanta yeah. just absolutely robbed them of it. I'm surprised they didn't take Rattler later on. Yeah. No, that's true. In all of our mock drafts, we had Vegas taking a QB. Right. So, and none of them, Atlanta, taking a QB. No, I know. 
Next up, we have obviously, oh yeah, we already talked about Justin Herbert. So Bo Nix in Denver now. You do have Zach Wilson. You have Jared Stidham, but I think it's pretty simple. Again, they want that fresh blood in there, and Bo Nix probably should be able to beat out those guys anyways. I don't think really either. I mean, Zach Wilson is just so poo. I mean, I'm so tired of seeing yeah. this guy start ball games. You know, I mean, same with Stidham, bro. I mean, I did not like Stidham at all. I oh, think you, I like Stiddy. You like him? Yeah. I mean, he came in last year, not this past year, the year before when he mm-hmm. was on the Raiders and they benched Derek Carr. He goes in and he completes like seventy percent of his passes, throws three touchdowns, forces overtime against the 49ers. <laughs> It was beautiful. That feels like uh, you place a monkey in front of a typewriter. He'll eventually type a <laughs> sentence to me. <laughs> it was it was impressive though. It was his first start ever in the NFL, and he was amazing in it. Like I kid you not. Like here, I'm gonna try and predict his stat line without looking, and then we'll go back mm-hmm. and look. Okay. Okay. I think he went, let's say, 25 of 33, 330 yards. Three touchdowns and one interception. So this is Vegas versus San Francisco, 2022. It was like in December of 2022. Let's take a gander here. Let's take a gander. It is loading. 37-34 was the final score in overtime. Looking at the stats here. Jared Stim went 23 of 34, 365 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Damn, that's the one that bothers me is I got the two interceptions. It was pretty close on the accuracy there, though, and 365 yards, so 35 more than I thought. But I mean, that is a great performance for your first ever That's game what I'm NFL. saying, though. Like, that is really good against the 49ers yeah. defense. I mean, I'm not going to deny that by any means. Yeah. But I mean, you he gotta... outplayed Brock Purdy. Yeah. Brock Purdy was only 22 of 35, so mm-hmm. he was less accurate, and he threw for 80 less yards, yeah. one less touchdown, and he also had one pick. Mm-hmm. So he outplayed Brock Purdy in that game. Obviously, it didn't last, but I was really impressed with how he played that game. But you got to look at his entire performance. No, I know. Uh, at the I'm Broncos. just, I'm a, because he also had like that really nice long hair at the time uh-huh. when he came out. He rolled yeah. it out. I was like, damn. That was the same time you had your nice I know. Long like hair. We were just vibing. Like the long yeah. hair brothers, you know, just kind of like a wavelength thing that we have, you know, message system. I guess once you cut it is when he started to fall off the yeah. face of the earth. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. He needs to get that longer hair back a little yeah. bit. All right. AFC North. Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow are your givens. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Russell Wilson here. I don't think Justin Fields has it in the BM yet. Maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe next year. He eventually will, but I don't think it's week one. Yeah, I think the most likely thing will be at some point this season, um, not necessarily from a Russell injury, but I feel like he's going to have a bad game, like maybe not necessarily a bad game, but you might have like a stretch of like two or three bad games, like yeah. through maybe like week five, right. six, and then maybe like Justin gets a start in week seven, yeah. just like for the fans to see him in action some of the non a little bit yeah exactly mm-hmm. so i don't think it'll be all the way until next year i think it's most right. likely to happen at some point this year but i agree okay. that russ should get the start yeah week one now i know you might disagree with this one but i think it's a pretty much given that deshaun watson's going to be starting for cleveland here there's really no one else behind them and they're paying him so much money to they can't pay him all that mm-hmm. money to just sit on the bench yeah i mean i don't like having him start because it just doesn't feel like He's going to do anything for the team. Maybe this is the year he's finally back, though. I don't, I don't think he'll yeah. ever be back to his uh, true form I from know. the Texans, I bro. Yeah. All he's thinking about is just getting a nice little <laughs> massage. Yeah. <laughs> AFC South. Obviously, you have CJ Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, Anthony Richardson, and Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even though boy, he's not Levis. signed anywhere. Yeah, it's going to be Will Levis. Ryan Tannehill is not signed anywhere so yet. He's, he's just a free floating agent. around in free yeah. agency. I think I might start a team and he'll come start for me, you know? <laughs> Dude, you should, yeah. Next thing you know, you have like... The propitious peacocks. <laughs> yeah, the propitious peacocks over here. They just kind of float around from city to city. You know, wouldn't that be fun, though, to have a team that is not attached to one city? So, like, you always, like, every city kind of gets a chance for a football game. Like, Utah, like, Salt Lake City gets a little action. You know, Portland, Oregon gets a little action. You know, we go up to Montana maybe for a little bit. You yeah. Know, to see all five of those people up there. 
and then you know just kind of do a little tour like i don't think that's a half bad idea <laughs> like a little tour football team it's like a concert like taylor swift but a football team it sounds like an immaculate business idea for you and your investment opportunity you know one just day. to get started with it one day yeah. i'm telling you one day yeah but anyways yeah do we all agree on that anthony richardson's gonna be back from injury so yeah he has to be bro he's gonna be the face of this offense this year yeah. he just needs to play a little bit more carefully exactly to prevent this stuff from happening again i totally agree nfc east dak prescott jalen hurts obvious ones I do think Jay and Daniels will be able to beat out Sam Hartman here for the starting role. Marcus Mariota's floating around in there somewhere too. <laughs> Dude, no question. Jay and Daniels <laughs> is going to be the, the starter. The only thing here. I could see with him is him getting like injured in like training camp or the preseason. I'm you telling think? you, dude, this guy is fragile as fuck. Like this guy, <laughs> he I like him, but he is a string bean. But he runs like he's Josh Allen, where he's like yeah. 280 pounds. Like yeah, he, he can't is, be doing that, no. you know, in the big leagues Dude, with he's these. He's like a little deer, like just galloping across the street you at night. You probably like that, like a, though. You probably you know, like his little scampers. I, I do, and like in college, like I mean, he's basically running up against the, like he's run with a bunch of like little sheep and like other little fawns and like <laughs> does and stuff like that. But now he's run with like the big bulls. You know, yeah. he's gonna get hit by like a you know a Dodge four by four or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I hope he starts. I think he will. But I feel like if anyone was going to get injured, like, early on, it's going to be him. He, like, he feels like Anthony Richardson of this year. Then we have Daniel Jones of the Giants. Now, they do have Drew Locke, but I think, again, they're paying Daniel Jones a lot of money. So, he will start day one, but I can almost guarantee that Drew Locke will get a start or two in there eventually. I don't think Daniel Jones is all that good. I think he's really lost his confidence, unfortunately. Nothing against him, but Drew Locke who seemed to have gained a lot of confidence in Seattle where he started a couple games, played mm-hmm. pretty well. Definitely think the fans will want to see him come out. Yeah, I like the pick. It's similar to the Russell Wilson, uh, Justin Fields kind of situation, in my opinion. Just the only difference for me is, like, I think Justin is a much better talent than Drew Locke. You know, I feel that he is much more no, yeah. likely to have oh, for sure. success if he were to get a start than Drew Locke. Drew Locke doesn't feel like... An answer for a team, oh, but Justin not. Justin Fields feels like it could be an answer. This for feels a team. like a team that's drafting number one overall next year. Yeah, this feels like the team that's going to take Cam Rising out of Utah, or you know, Jalen Milrow, or something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's just still like a just next year would be the rebuild year for the Giants. Oh yeah, exactly. This is a make or break year for Daniel Jones, mm-hmm. Danny Dimes, FC West. I think this might be one of the most straightforward divisions of them all. You have Brock Purdy, Matt Stafford, Geno Smith, and Kyler Murray. Really couldn't tell you even the backups on any of those teams except for Seattle, who it is Sam Hall. They just traded for him. I just don't think Sam Hall, after last year, he's ready to start another game. Geno Smith's established himself there. He's got some Mm -hmm. seniority. He's always played decent enough. Definitely not as great of a season this past year as the year before, but still plenty good to have the starting job week one. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's a chance that he does get injured this year, though. I feel like he's becoming a little bit more yeah. injury prone after he's a all of these. Older. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's been in the league for many years now, and he mm-hmm. just, you know, he might be getting beaten up a little bit by some of the big boys. Yeah, I and, mean, we saw that happen this past year, and that's why Drew Locke got those starts. Yeah, of course, you know, I would not ever want to wish an injury upon him, but I do think that it could potentially yeah. happen, and that would be where right. Sam Howell gets the start. I don't see Seattle putting in Howell if Geno has a bad game. That just doesn't feel to me. Yeah, like I mean, that's, Sam Howell had some really bad games yeah. this past year, so... It would have to be ugly consistently from Geno Smith, which Mm -hmm. I don't think he's capable of unless he does have an injury of some sort. Right. NFC North, Jared Goff, of course. You have Jordan Love, of course. Caleb Williams, obviously. And I do think that they will sit J.J. McCarthy in Minnesota for a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Like I've been saying, he needs to sit behind someone. He just turned 21 a couple months ago, so Sam Darnold's going to be the guy there whether you like it or not. Now, would I have rathered him sit behind someone a little bit more experienced, maybe a Matt Stafford, maybe a Kirk Cousins? Mm, Yeah, I would, but Sam Darnold, I guess we'll have to do here. It's his third team, fourth team, actually. He went Jets, Panthers, Niners, now Vikings, Mm -hmm. so he's a journeyman. 
And I do think he'll get a couple of starts here. He'll probably play decent enough, but the team's going to be quite bad, I think, overall. So they'll have reason to throw JJ in there probably by like week five. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It seems like uh, Justin Jefferson might start throwing a little fit in the way I'm that yeah. Devontae Adams mm-hmm. was, you know, getting a little angry with his position on yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I mean, he's been quiet so far, but I just can't imagine someone yeah. who's that good and who knows they're that good just content on a bad team right. with a rookie quarterback who mm-hmm. might not be good for another year or two, just kind of rotting away up there in the cold. So Yeah, and even Darnold isn't a good person to have mentoring J.J. No. I mean, it's Darnold just getting tossed around from team to team, like you mentioned, and I just – it does not seem like a serviceable guy to teach J.J. the yeah, way. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's a little ugly up there in Minnesota right now. I think they'll mm-hmm. easily be another like top five pick in the draft next year. Yeah. And last division, you have the NFC South, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr. I'm going to say Kirk Cousins. I don't think there's any scenario unless he gets hurt that Michael Penix Jr. slips in there. Although, I will say this. Kirk Cousins will not be able to practice with the guys for quite some while as he's still recovering from the torn Achilles. So who's practicing with them? Getting those valuable reps? It's Michael Penix Jr. Mm-hmm. So if there is any like sneaky, like obvious one that flips in this whole thing, it could be this one. Just because of the fact that Michael Penix Jr. is going to have more playing chemistry right. experience with those guys than Kirk does. Just because Kirk's not going to be ready yet. But I'm going to put him down for this. And obviously it's going to be Bryce Young, who I think could have a sneaky decent year this year in Carolina. I don't think that Bryce will have that good of a year. I would put him in like the bottom quarter of QBs, like between the 25 and 32 rank, to be honest with you. I have to place a friendly little wager here. (laughs) I mean, it's possible. I think I'm going to say he has over 22 passing touchdowns this year. I don't know Would you take the over-under on the 22? You would take the under. I don't, yeah, I don't have a lot of confidence in this team, I think he threw... 16 this past year let's see here let's see here wikipedia wikipedia oh only 11 wow i was giving him way too much credit there 11 to 10 interceptions did he have any rushing touchdowns no wow yeah that's a tough year 11 touchdowns 22 touchdowns feels too girthy to me i think he's gonna double it i really do that would be really impressive if he does diante johnson xavier leggett He's got some receivers now. Okay. I mean, he had it. had him Thielen. And, uh, Let's well, remember, Adam Thielen had his best game when Andy Dalton was that quarterback. Who they really <laughs> probably should have started from day one. Like, if we were doing this last year, I would have said Andy Dalton should have been the starter mm-hmm. while Bryce sits and learns and doesn't damage himself because he's you know playing bad, but that's what they did. So, I mean, I could see him having another bad year, but... I'm not buying to him a little bit here. I'm not buying to him. Okay. I think CJ Stroud has a sophomore slump. No, and Bryce no, Young no, sneaks no, up no. on some guys. That's no, all I'm that, saying. Dude, CJ Stroud is going to have a top five performance this wow. year. Yeah. MVP caliber? I don't think he'll be MVP caliber, but he'll be, I think I would put him at like four. Wow. Behind like, That's crazy. I would say like behind Mahomes, Purdy, and Lamar. And I would have Where's Josh. I would put him at five. Josh Allen at five. Yeah, I think he doesn't have any receivers anymore, so yeah. it's going to be tough for him to. I'm glad I didn't still... place that Josh or that Justin Herbert MVP future bet. Yeah, because <laughs> I would have before they not only lost all their receivers, but then didn't draft Brock Bowers. Mm-hmm. So that one's a little precarious. Well, it was like plus twelve hundred beforehand, and now like I haven't checked it. It's got to it be is, more. But, it's yeah, got to like, be more. Plus I mean, two thousand, maybe. It's got to be, yeah. Maybe so, we can uh, give it a little check here. I did also want to say one more thing about the whole Kirk Cousins situation. Okay. I just wonder if could Atlanta have drafted Michael Penix Jr. because they are worried about Kirk and they notice like his recovery is not going according to plan, and so they're they're just getting worried about it all. I mean, I don't see how it could go that way. Like, I mean, it's always pretty standard or standard. Mm -hmm. how they heal from these things. It'd be very rare for someone, even at his age, he's still a relatively young guy, in my opinion, to have any complications. So, I mean, obviously you may have a point, but I just think they made a really weird decision Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah, no, that's fair. 
All right, I just uh, pulled up the odds here. Justin Herbert is plus 1,400 now to win MVP. There's zero so, value whatsoever yeah, in that. Jeez. It did go up a little bit, but not too much. Um, before we review our best bets of the week this week, I just wanted to make a little comment that the Pacers are currently beating the Knicks as we record this. Ooh. I know it's it's early. It's only the second quarter, but they're winning 31-29. to 29. I like that. Yeah, Pacers dude. being sneaky this year. Indeed they are. But let's uh, recap your Green Goblin week last week, your baseball bets, dude. Yeah, so I guess I just went all Wednesday, May 1st, Star Men's League, you know, Chicago, Mets. Just felt the under in that game. Yeah, that was a big under. I literally think it was one to nothing. It was, yeah. Imanaga versus Buto. And then Cleveland Houston under. I think that was Verlander versus McKenzie. Mm hmm. And who, like I said last week, is a very underrated pitcher, and he's pitching today, and he's actually having a really nice game as well Ooh. today. So, yeah, Houston, Cleveland, that under hit. I think a few more runs were scored. What was it, 3-2, to two, something like that, 2-3, to three, something along those lines? Do you remember when you checked? I don't remember what the final score was, but I, the under, I think, was under 9.5 for Cleveland-Houston, and it yeah. was under 7.5 for the Cubs and Mets. Okay, so some safe unders there. Yeah. And then Kansas City, Toronto, the no runs first inning. I don't remember who was starting. I think it was Cole Reagans and maybe Berrios, or was it? I don't think it was Gosman. Let me double check on that because I knew two good pitchers were pitching. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was Seth Lugo and Bassett. Yeah, obviously two really good pitchers there. And uh, I think this one, I thought this one uh, went like the first six innings without any score. And then there was like six runs in the seventh inning or something like that. There were three in the six, so nothing oh, okay. until the six, and then Kansas City went up three, then the seventh inning. Yeah. Toronto scored one, then okay. the eighth, they put a few more. And by the way, the Cleveland Houston game did end three to two. Good so. stuff. I was actually I remember like I was about to like click on the game to like check whether or not it was going to be like if it was a no run first inning and I saw the score was six to one and I was like, Oh man. Oh, Siri's giving us a oh, little Oh my chat. goodness. <laughs> you just um, awoke her. I did, yeah. I have that tendency with <laughs> female AIs. Very arousing. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, but so I remember I was like checking on the score and I saw that it was six to one and I thought there's no way that this game had a no run first inning. Yeah, I know, seven yeah. runs being scored, but it was like, oh, it did in the first no six run, innings yeah. were Craziness. no runs. So that's excellent. So three good bets there. By yeah, luck, I'll probably have zero. No, bets this week. No, no, no. We should have parlayed them last week. Oh, bro. man, that would have been so much. That would have been girthy. That would have been like probably like a plus 400, plus 500 maybe. Oh, yeah, at least. I mean, those yeah. were the unders were like minus 105 or 108 mm -hmm. around that territory. Yeah, good Let's stuff hear about there. about yours. Yeah, uh, just a couple updates here. So OKC to win the finals is now up. So it was originally plus 1,600 when we placed it. It's now plus 800. So... Odds are cut in half there. The Pacers were plus 11,000 when we placed it. They're plus 4,600 now. Actually, a decrease from last week, which is pretty weird. They were plus 4,500 last week when we did the pod. Yeah. And now they're plus 4,600. Not sure why, since they won the series yeah. since we recorded. I don't understand um, that either. But, I mean, if they win the game tonight against the Knicks, this will shoot up a lot. Oh, yeah. Or, I guess no, probably down. half. Yeah, I mean, yeah, something like that. So... That would be humongous if the Pacers do that. You could have a nice cash out option, I'm sure. Dude, yeah, absolutely. Big time. Unfortunately, already touched on this, 76ers did not win the series against the Knicks. We sprinkled a half unit on this one at plus 540. Mm -hmm. They were down 3 to 1 in the series. They did win another game, so they did, you know, make it 3 to 2, but then right. the Knicks won the next one and won 4 to 2. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Um, sadly, Wednesday Last week, Miami did not win. That was plus 660 on the money line. <laughs> that was some girthy odds there. The Celtics were favored by like 15. I really just thought that Miami would do a little bit better in the playoffs. Um, yeah. you know, they really did last year. They beat them in the playoffs last year, and the Celtics lose a lot of games at home in the playoffs. So I thought this was a good bet to take, but for sure did not come through. However, my spread bet did. I been on fire with the spreads i picked dallas to cover the spread against the clippers it was only minus two and a half and they did so so that's what we got awesome well let's move on to this week's best bets good stuff i've got another two basketball bets both are on tuesday this week cleveland at boston 
I'm going to take Cleveland plus 11 here. This feels like a lot of points to give a team at Boston's home stadium. We just talked about Boston doesn't have doesn't do very well in their their home games in the playoffs so double digit underdog here i want to bet them on the spread we're going to go cleveland plus 11 second one we've got dallas against okc i'm going to take okc minus three and a half this feels like a a really obvious one to me like i really don't see dallas like winning this the first game in this series or even like keeping it all that close like i think that okc will probably win by like 10 or more honestly so minus three and a half feels easy to me but maybe i'm just gonna be a bozo and this will be like the first spread that i (laughs) miss in my last 10 so we'll see what happens yeah no i like that okc bet a lot i'm a huge fan of that yeah, thank you. I agree. As for me, I'm all load up on some Wednesday baseball. Gonna go Cubs money line against the Padres. You have Imanaga pitching again, so gonna take him. It's pretty. I think it's only minus minus one thirty two or something at this moment in time. So pretty good value, I would say. Mm-hmm. Then the Mets, St. Louis. I'm gonna take the Mets money line. They're gonna be in plus money, and then no run first inning nerfies for Seattle, Minnesota, and Arizona, Cincinnati on Wednesday, May seventh. So to the, tomorrow is May seventh. So is it tomorrow or oh, is it, it should be when? May eighth? Okay. Should be May eighth, I, I believe. You. Those are all yeah Wednesdays. So I didn't want to do Tuesday just because it doesn't give you guys enough time to sprinkle a little cheese on it if you know what i'm saying i want to give you guys yeah i want to give you guys a little time or maybe i'm just tweaking i think i'm tweaking they are tuesday okay they're tuesday whatever you don't have time (laughs) you know you gotta watch this this morning you gotta get that out and yeah put some cheese on that right away yeah i mean biscuitry on there because i went 100 percent last week so Hopefully I can at least go two for two or two for four. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, and I think I've hit my last 10 like spread bets or something like that. So sprinkle some yeah. coin on the ones that I gave for Tuesday as well. We are the sorcerers after all. Yeah. So, all right, guys. I don't believe we have any fan mail. No, sir. Take a little gandle at the Gmail here real quick. It always wants to log me into the account that I don't want to get logged into. Oh, we do. We do. Is it from Papa Bear again? He said, nice job overall. Looks like you got a lot of the top right. The bottom half was almost all what you said, but not correct teams. Impressive with the players taken. Very nice. Well, thank you for the Love support, that. Padre. He uh, He's always listening and tuning in and Absolutely. offering up some, some fan mail. Maybe... Uh, I wish he would give us like some basketball picks. He loves basketball. Basketball is his favorite Just give sport. us something to chew on. Yeah, so... Papa Bear, if you made it to the end of this episode, maybe <laughs> maybe you can uh, send in some round two playoff picks for next week's fan mail recap. Yeah, it's required spicy. now at this point. It's required. Yeah, I mean, we're <laughs> literally like telling you to send it in, so yeah, you ought to. Direct order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good stuff all around there. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in and listening, and we will see you guys next week for another episode. Bye now.